Hi, today we'll talk about features of CG diagnosis of myocardial ischemia and myocardial infarction. Subscribe to my channel for more videos. At the beginning, I want to remind you about the first universal definition of myocardial infarction, which includes pathological QVA, ST segment changes, and TVF changes. You can stop the video and read the information on this slide or visit the site linked in the information box below the video. The first feature is always interpret ECG with the clinical situation. As the segment changes we can find in many situations, such as acute coronary syndrome, myocarditis or tachycardia. We think about myocardial infarction if we see typical symptoms of ischemia. It's an old person with many companion illnesses. We need to exclude myocardial infarction at the first, intense because it's an emergency. Look at this CG. We can see a the segment elevation at lead 2, 3 and ADF. If the person has ischemia-like symptoms, we think about acute coronary syndrome with a ST segment elevation. One more feature. If it's acute coronary syndrome, we can see reciprocal ST segment changes on the ECG, such as ST segment depression at lead 1 and AVL. Diagnosis myocardial infarction with bundle branch block on ECG. If you have a patient with ischemic symptoms and left bundle branch block on ECG, you need to use Garbosa criteria for acute coronary syndrome diagnosis. When we have left bundle branch block, we also have ST segment changes and TVF changes, and these changes are discordant. We think about acute coronary syndrome if you have concordant as the segment changes. If you want a special video about Scarbosa criteria, leave a comment below the video. Patient management with ischemia symptoms and left bundle branch block is similar to acute coronary syndrome with as the segment elevation. Diagnosis right ventricular myocardial infarction is very difficult on ECG. We need to use a special leads for this, such as V3R and V4R. If we see an inferior myocardial infarction and ST segment changes, it leads to 3 and AVF, we need to record an ECG with additional leads V3R and V4R for right ventricular myocardial infarction diagnosis. Clinically, this patient will be hypotonic with ischemic symptoms. Posterior myocardial infarction. On 12 lead ECG, we can see only reciprocal ST segment changes. For posterior myocardial infarction diagnosis, we need also to use additional posterior leads V7, V8, and V9. On 12 lead ECG, we can see ST segment depression, high R wave at leads from V1 to V3, and positive T wave at lead from V1 and V3. At lead V7, V8 and V9, we can see the mirror changes such as ST segment elevation, Q wave and negative T wave. Thank you for watching my video. If you want more videos about ECG, subscribe to my channel.